Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna take a look at how to automatically determine video sections using AI and Python. The specific use case is gonna be automatically generating YouTube chapters. In Mr.'s latest video, in the best AI tools for content creators, we can see how the YouTube chapters let us easily scroll around to see the different tools and jump to the relevant section in the video. And we're gonna use this GitLab meeting as an example. So we're gonna write a program to automatically extract the sections of this video, and here's the final result. Uh, so we see the timestamps for the whole video, and then next to each timestamp, we see a title for the relevant section. And so this is really useful if you miss this meeting, for example, and you need to just jump around to the specific section that's relevant to you. So determining video sections in general is really helpful, and using AI, we can do it quickly, cheaply, and automatically at scale. So let's learn how to do this with Python now. First, we'll need to install the Assembly AI Python SDK. So just pip install Assembly AI. After that, you're gonna to need to set your Assembly AI API key as an environment variable. So if you don't have an Assembly AI API key yet, you can go to the link in the description and sign up. And once you're in your dashboard, you're just gonna to wanna to click copy API key to copy your API key. Back in the terminal, you set your API key as an environment variable. If you're on Mac or Linux, you can do export Assembly AI API key and then set your API key. And if you're on Windows, you're just gonna to wanna to use set instead of export. And now we're ready to start writing our application. So create a file in your project directory called main.py. And the first thing we need to do is import assembly AI as AAI. Next, we need to create a transcriber, which will be responsible for transcribing our video file. So go ahead and create a transcriber. And that's an AAI.transcriber type. And we're gonna pass in a special configuration. So we're gonna pass a transcription config type into the transcriber. And we're just gonna set auto chapters equal to true. And so what this is doing is enabling assembly AI's auto chapters model when we transcribe files using this transcriber. And what this model does is automatically divide up an audio or video file into semantically isolated sections. And it also generates a few different types of summaries for each of those sections. And you can read more about auto chapters in our documentation. So now that we've defined our transcriber, we can use it to create the transcript. So go ahead and create a transcript and to create it, we're gonna use the transcriber's transcribe method. And you can pass in either a remote file or a local file, but if it's a remote file, you'll need to make sure it's publicly accessible. So we'll be passing in a remote file here. And once we get our transcript back, the auto chapters information will be stored in the chapters attribute. So we can print off the transcript text and for each chapter identified by the auto chapters model, it will have a start and end time, which determines when that chapter started and stopped. And then it will have a summary. So this is just a, a longer summary of that section. It will also have a headline, which is a shorter summary, usually just a sentence. And then it will also have a gist, which is just a few word summary. So for this application, we'll be leveraging the headlines because they're good for summarizing each of the video sections in just a sentence, which will make for good YouTube chapters, for example. So now we need to work on taking each of these headlines and formatting it appropriately. You can use any format you want, but for this example, we'll be using the YouTube chapters format. So this format is a series of lines and each line has a timestamp at the beginning and then the title for that section. So the timestamp is the starting time for that section in minutes and then seconds. And that section ends at the start of the next chapter, which is on the next line. And if this file were longer than an hour, we'd also need to include another pair of digits for the hour information as well. So the starting and end time for each of these chapters is given in milliseconds by Assembly AI's API. So first we're gonna write a function to convert the milliseconds to hours, minutes, and seconds. So you can delete all these lines, and then we're gonna go up to the top of our file and uh, create a function. So we're gonna call our function milliseconds to hour, minute, seconds, and it's gonna take in a time. And we set seconds, milliseconds equal to div mod, the time, and a thousand. So div mod takes in a value and it calculates the quotient and remainder when given another value. So here we're taking the time and we're dividing it by a thousand, which is the conversion between seconds and milliseconds. So we're dividing it by a thousand and the quotient becomes the seconds. And then the remaining milliseconds just go into the milliseconds variable. And we just repeat this process. So next we do minutes seconds and we do div mod again, this time passing in seconds and the conversion ratio between seconds and minutes. So here we do 60, uh, and this will take the seconds. It will calculate the quotient against 60, giving us the total number of minutes. And then any remaining seconds just go back into the seconds variable. And then finally, we have to do this one more time. Uh, hours minutes equals div mod minutes 60. 
And finally, we're just gonna return a tuple of hours, minutes, seconds. And we can leave out the millisecond information because we're not using that anywhere in our formatting. So now we need to create a function to create these timestamps given the list of chapters returned by Assembly AI's API. So go ahead and create a function called create timestamps. And the first thing we need to do is determine whether the final chapter starts after or before one hour. So if it's before one hour, we're gonna use this minute seconds format. And if it's after one hour, we're gonna need those additional two digits. So we're gonna define the last hour variable and this is gonna take the starting time of the final chapter. It's gonna convert it from milliseconds to hour, minute, seconds format uh, from the function we defined above. And then we're gonna extract the first element of that tuple to get the last hour. And now we're gonna use this variable to determine our format. So we're gonna create a ternary operator. So if the last hour is equal to zero, meaning that the final chapter starts before an hour, we're gonna use this minutes, seconds format. And we're gonna use this formatting to ensure that it's always two digits. So if the minute or second information is less than 10, we'll still have the zero at the beginning to ensure that it's two digits. And uh, if the last hour is not equal to zero, in other words, the final chapter starts after an hour, then we're just gonna add on this hour component. Next, we're gonna iterate through each chapter returned to us by assembly AI. So we're gonna create a lines variable and set it equal to an empty list. So each element in this list will be one line from the final timestamps. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna enumerate through each chapter passed into the function. Then for each chapter, we're going to extract the starting time under the hours, minutes, seconds format by using the milliseconds to hours, minutes, seconds uh, function we defined above. And now we can just append the timestamp line to the list. So we're gonna do lines.append, and then we're going to format the time, passing in the hours, minutes, seconds information. And then we're going to add the chapter headline after that. So this will leave us with a line that has the timestamp at the beginning and then the headline afterwards. And we actually have one more thing to do here. So YouTube expects the first chapter to start at zero and the first chapter returned by assembly AI doesn't always start at zero. So if you have, for example, 30 seconds of silence at the beginning of an audio or video file, then assembly AI's auto chapters model will start the first chapter when the speaking begins. So the starting time of the first chapter will be at 30 seconds. So what we need to do uh, is we need to ensure that the first timestamp starts at zero. And we can do that pretty easily just by turning this line into a ternary operator. So we add the condition that if we're on the first chapter, or in other words, if the index is equal to zero, then we're just gonna set this hour, minute, seconds tuple equal to zero, zero, zero. And otherwise we're still gonna just use the minutes to hours, minutes, seconds function to convert the start time into this tuple. And once we've enumerated through each of these chapters and we have the list of lines, the last thing we have to do is just join the lines together with new line characters between. So that will get the formatting that we need for the YouTube chapters feature. Uh, and then we can just return that. So now we can go to the bottom of our main.py file and actually use this function. So we can go ahead and pass in our transcript chapters into the create timestamps function we just created and save this as the timestamp lines variable and then print out the lines. So if you go ahead and run the program now, you'll actually see this. All of the formatting is correct, but the titles could use a little bit of work. Each chapter's headline is just a little bit long and it doesn't always sufficiently communicate what's actually going on in that section. So we're gonna use an LLM to improve each of these titles. To do this, we're gonna use a lemur, Assembly AI's framework for applying LLMs to audio files. And the great thing about lemur is that it takes in the transcript as context when we ask it to do things. So when we pass it a chapter headline and we say improve the title, it's not just doing this without any context. It's actually going to have the context of the entire transcript in mind. And so that allows it to create better headlines. And you can use the transcription and auto chapters with a free API key. But if you want to use lemur, you're actually going to have to add funds to your assembly AI account. So go ahead and do that in your dashboard if you haven't done so already. So now we can go ahead and create our prompt and this is gonna be an F string. So the first thing we're gonna do is define a role for this LLM. Uh, and let me just add some brackets here to get rid of this uh, highlighting. So we tell the LLM that it's a YouTube content professional and that it's very competent and able to come up with catchy names for the different sections of video transcripts that are submitted to it. Next, we're gonna pass in global context for this LLM. And we're just gonna say uh, context is that this transcript is of a logistics meeting at GitLab. Now we give the LLM a concrete instruction and we say you are provided information about the sections of the transcript under timestamps. 
where the format for each line is timestamp section summary. And then we put timestamps here and pass in the timestamp lines that we created above. And then finally, uh, we just add the format that we want the LLM to respond with, which is timestamp catchy section title. And we add output here, which hopefully will make the LLM not include a preamble. So we can go ahead and remove this print statement now, and we can pass this prompt into lemur. So on the transcript, we call in the lemur.task method, which is for submitting a general instruction to the LLM. And we pass in the prompt that we just wrote, and we save this as the result. And then we get the response, uh, we strip off any white space and we print the output. And we can actually uh, strip off the white space here too. So if you run the program, you'll see that this is the output from the LLM. Uh, and so there's two things here. So first, uh, the model included a preamble. So this is that introductory sentence from the LLM. And the second thing here is that LLMs are inherently probabilistic. And so we actually need to go back through and verify that the LLM didn't change any of these timestamps. Because uh, if we passed in 940, it could have changed it to 740 uh, just because LLMs are probabilistic by nature. So we just need to account for that chance. So we'll use rejects for this. So go to the top of the file and uh, import rejects as uh, re. And now we're going to create one more helper function. So we create this filter timestamps function. And so what we do is we split our text into a list of lines. And for each line in this list, we're going to include the line in timestamp lines if it matches this rejects. And this rejects just filters for lines that start with uh, a number of digits, a colon, and a number of digits. And you could make this more precise by specifying the number of digits, but uh, LLMs are good enough that you really don't need to. And finally, we just join each of these lines back together into one string and return that string. So now we can go back down to the bottom of the file and we can filter for just the timestamp lines from the LLM output. And now that we filtered out the preamble, we can go back through and verify that none of the timestamps changed. So we'll create two lists here. We'll take our timestamp lines from above and we'll split lines and we'll take our filtered output from here and we'll again split lines. So now we have two lists of timestamp lines. And now we can compare these lists to see if any of the timestamps changed. So we can do for uh, OF in zip original filtered. So what the zip function does is it interleaves these two lists. So it returns another list that's the same length as these input lists. And the ith element in the return list is a tuple. And the first element in that tuple is the ith element of original. And the second element in the tuple is the ith element of filtered. So we take the ith element in the original list and the ith element in the filtered list we split it on the space, and then we take the element at the first index. And so what this is doing is it's splitting along this space, and then it's just isolating the timestamp. And once we've extracted the timestamps from the original timestamps and the LLM output timestamps, if these timestamps do not match, we're just gonna raise a runtime error. And if we pass that check, then we know the LLM didn't modify any of those timestamps, and we can go ahead and print the final result. And it will usually take less than a minute, but if you have a really long audio or video file, it might take a couple more minutes. And here we see the results. So again, we have these timestamps and we have the LLM improved titles for each section. So you can copy and paste these timestamps into a YouTube description to create the YouTube chapters. Uh, or if you want to do this in an automated way, you could pass off this information to the YouTube API to automatically do this for a series of videos. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below, or feel free to check out Mr's latest video on AI tools for content creators. Let's take a look at some of the apps that you can use today to make your content creation easier. This could be removing background noise from your voice recordings, making sure that you're always looking into the lens, automatically making captioned short clips from your longer videos to share on your socials, and much more. Let's get started.